In this video I will explain how to implement grouping and aggregation. But before continuing, recall that we already talked about co-grouping in the context of join processing. I explained the relationship of those two in my videos on sort merge join, sort merge join, and the generalized co-group join. Generalized co-grouped join. So if you're unsure about this relationship before continuing, please take a look at those videos. So here we will basically look at a situation where the co-group has only a group from one of the relations. How does that work? There are basically only two techniques that are important. One is hash-based, the other is sort-based. So let's take a look. We have again a grouping attribute. So we group on attribute x of relation r. And we also need an aggregation function. So this aggregation function, if you go back to SQL for a moment, we want to implement something like this. Select r dot x comma aggregate and again here we typically specify a single attribute so in, in sql most aggregation functions are defined to take a single attribute here but in theory it could also be multiple attributes so a sql statement could look like this so r dot y from r group by r dot x. This statement can be implemented with the algorithms I demonstrate in this video. So, however, in the general case, notice that here the aggregation function doesn't have to operate on a single attribute. So it's just fine to define any subset of the original schema. So with those brackets, I don't mean the relation. Those brackets indicate schema. This is the schema of r. That is denoted by those brackets. So what I'm interested in, what I require here, is a subset of the original schema of R. And that is required here for the parameter, for the number of attributes I pass here. Some other subtlety here is that I really require a multiset. A set is not enough because if this is a subset of the schema, I may lose some of the tuples as the set doesn't have duplicates. If I reduce the number of attributes, I may obtain duplicates and therefore it's important to have a multiset here. A multiset is passed to the aggregation function. And the output is some scalar type typically. Again, in theory, this could be a more complex type, it could be another record type, but let's focus on the simple case here. Input is a multiset of R prime, which is schema-wise a subset of the original schema R and the output as a scalar type. How do we implement that? So in hash-based grouping we use as input R and the aggregation function. Again, no materialization required here. This doesn't mean that we actually copy relation R to main memory. It doesn't mean that we copy it to any level of the storage hierarchy. This just means there's a way to stream it to the implementation of this function. Then what we do is we initialize an empty hash map called HM. So we initialize a handle to a list. This is called group and that contains the list of tuples that belong to a specific group. We will see how that works in a moment. And then what we do is we loop over all tuples from the input R. We check whether the key belonging to the group is already contained in the hash map. Recall we are grouping on attribute x. So we have to check whether we have seen that specific key before. So if this specific key is equal to 42, we have to check whether that's already contained in the hash map. That is what happens here. And then there are only two cases. If we haven't seen it, that is what follows in the if branch here. Then we create a new list, initialize a new list. If not, we can simply retrieve the existing list. So if we have already seen a specific key, let's say 42, then we simply retrieve the existing list for that grouping key and assign it to this group variable. That is what we do here. So here we just get that specific entry, the value. So you see the hash map here maps from a key to a list of values. 
And what is the type here? The type of that value is R again. That is the schema we use. Basically, we put all of the tuples from R that have this specific grouping key into the same list. So in either case, be it that we had to create a new list or that we could obtain the existing list from the hash map, we add the current tuple R to the group. That is what we do here. And then you actually don't require this code line in most programming languages. It's just for clarity and completeness. Here we override the old entry. So this is not required if this group is just a reference, if it's just a shallow copy to the group. If it were a deep copy, you would have to put it here like this. So in most programming languages, you don't need that. You can leave this away. But it just signals that after this code line in the hash map, this mapping exists. So the mapping from r.x to the extended group, which has now an additional entry. So once you're done with that, inserting each and every tuple of R into the hash map, you basically inspect each existing group individually and call the aggregation function. That is what happens here. So for each existing key, again, each existing grouping key, R.x, what we do is we obtain that specific group and we feed it into the aggregation function. So the aggregation function takes this as the input and computes some aggregation result, which is then part of the output. So basically all that needs to be done here is then the output, the key, which is the current grouping key, r.x we're looking at, and the aggregation result we obtained for that. You do this for each and every key, each and every distinct grouping key you ever found in the first phase here, output it, and once you're done with this loop, you're done grouping and aggregating the input. The second way to compute grouping and aggregation is to use a sort-based method. So how does that work? The same requirements as before. We have our grouping attribute, we have an aggregation function. How do we call this method? Okay, again, input R and the aggregation function. And then very similar to sort merge join, we first have to sort the input on the grouping attribute. So again, if it's already sorted, you don't have to do that. So for instance, if you already have an index on this key and you want to group on that, maybe you don't have to sort. But in the general case, you have to sort first. And then what you do is, is very similar to sort merge join. So you step through the sorted entries one by one. So you initialize the pointer to the first entry that happens here. You also initialize a variable that points to the current group value of x and you initialize the list of values that have this specific value. So then we loop and we basically check whether this group value changed. So recall now the input is sorted. So we see something like this. We have group values. If this is column r.x, say we have group values 2, 2, 4, 4, 7, 7, 7, 9, and so forth. So basically we have to detect those boundaries where r.x actually changes. And that is what this condition checks. So once we're in this situation, we see that this group value changed, we have to close the previous group. So once we're in this situation, we found this entry here, we can aggregate all values that exist in this list. So let's see how that works. So here we're in this situation where we found a group value that changed. Then we basically call the aggregate function again on the group. The group contains values with respect to the previous group value, not the new group value. So we call the aggregation function, we compute the aggregation result, and again we output it here as in the hash-based method. Once that is done, it's important to reinitialize the list. The list should now become empty because we now have a new group value. We have to insert different tuples. And we also have to reset the current group value. Now we look at this value. So we have to set this to pr.x. And we also append the current tuple to that group. So that happens in any case, be it that the group value changed or be it that it did not change. In any case, the tuple we are currently looking at is appended to the group. So if we are in this situation, the list is empty, and the first tuple belonging to the group will be appended here. 
if we have the case that this is equal, so we, this is not executed, we append the tuple anyway. So then it's a tuple that has the same group value as the value before. So there we don't have to do this one, but we still have to append. And that is what happens in sort-based sort grouping. Of course, it's also important to move the pointer forward. So once we appended it, we go to the next tuple. And then we have to check, of course, whether we are at the end of the sorted sequence of tuples. So once we are at the last tuple, assume here that there's some special indicator telling me that I reached the end. So once I move the pointer forward here, and now the pointer points to an artificial end element, which, which is actually not part of the result, I stop this loop. Still, I have to close the previous group. So the similar statements that were executed here for closing the group, this is group closing. Let's call it like that, group closing. This has to be executed here after this line again, of course, because we still have this list with tuples, this group list that contains elements and we have not executed the aggregation function for those elements. That's the last group in the sequence. We still have to handle that. We do it here. So again, we call the aggregation function, output it, and then we are done. That is how sort-based grouping and aggregation works. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did. Or you look at our website, infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.